Hello everyone, how's it going? Dr. Incompetent here, and let's play some Stardew Valley, shall we? Continuing our complete beginner's guide, and we're on day two here on our farm. And now we're going to start slowly getting into the flow of taking care of our day-to-day -day operations on the farm and working to expand it. Okay, so it's 6 a.m., which is when you wake up if you get a good night's sleep, and you're ready to go. Jump out of bed. You could run over here again, check the weather report, um, and it's going to rain all day tomorrow, which is actually fantastic for us because when it rains, as I was saying, it means we won't have to water our crops manually. So this is definitely a good sign for us that we want to take this 450 gold coins that we have and buy some more crops because we're going to get a free watering day, uh, which will give us more time to do other things that we want to do. All right, so I'm going to walk out of our house. And it looks like we got a letter. Whenever you have a letter in your mailbox, there'll be this little dialogue bubble with a envelope on it. And you can click it and it says, Hello there, just got back from a fishing trip. You should come down to the beach sometime. I've got something for you. And this is from Willie. So Willie is the area uh, fisherman, maritime expert. And this is a good piece of information for us because it kind of articulates another point that I want to get into today, which is exploring Pelican Town and the surrounding areas to just kind of show you what's out there, what the different facilities are, where you can go to do different things so that you get a better lay of the land. Now, you don't have to do this in your own playthrough, of course. This is the beauty of the game. You can do whatever you want. You could spend the day just clearing your farm, removing the debris, chopping trees, gathering resources, sorting things, storing them. That's actually a great thing to do. It helps raise your skills. It helps clear your farm and prepare it uh, for more space. Fantastic. You could spend a day fishing. You could spend a day exploring. You could spend a day foraging. You know, there's just so many possibilities. But I'm going to kind of ease us into the process of understanding where we can go in the town. Okay. Um, you don't have any mail. I don't. So the first thing we want to do is get our watering can, and you'll see that, look, our seeds have sprouted, and our um, parsnips are starting to grow. And we need to just walk around and water them one by one. Now, as we're doing this, you'll notice that the water level on my can is uh, decreasing. And I'm going to show you a little tip. We're not going to be able to water all of these with this amount of water, but just empty out all of the water you've got, okay? And he'll tell you, or she'll tell you, your character will tell you when there's no water. You see, they'll say, out of water. You can actually also use this little teeny pond to refill. So just come over here, and this is what it's great for. Get your watering can refilled, and go here. Any water source will refill your can. And now, boom, all of our crops are watered. Um... We got a new quest, which is to go to the beach, and we need to visit the beach before 5 p.m., so this will be on our schedule. And I'm going to spend day two here um, exploring and showing you some things around town. So um, you can also, this is a little uh, watering bowl for your pet, and you can fill this up to make sure that your pet has uh, water. And I'm going to get our scythe out and just kind of clear this out. This dilapidated structure here is a broken greenhouse, okay? that um, later in the game you can repair this greenhouse and what it allows you to do is plant crops that are for any season in the controlled climate of the greenhouse it's fantastic it's much later though uh, it takes a lot of resources to get going but it's a really cool thing to have so it's something to look forward to in this cave check it out let's go inside Ooh, it's dark nothing in here right now but this will become useful later. Okay. Um, and I'm going to continue clearing out this path because we haven't used this northern exit of our farm yet. So let's come out here and just talk about what this path does. And as you're on any of these paths, you might see worms. Let's dig them up. We got some free stone. And we're going to keep following this, looking for anything that we can forage potentially or worms, anything of that nature. 
and then this path pops you out right here on the map. I'm going to push start and just show you on the map where I am. I am up here, you can see my little icon, and I'm by Robin, Demetrius, Sebastian, and Maru's home, uh, and it's the carpenter shop. So this is where you come if you want to talk to Robin and have her build anything on your farm. So let's go check that out. Remember, we also still have this quest for introductions. We've only met 11 of the 28 people around, so let's keep talking to people. So we can go inside this house, and um, you'll see, well, wait a minute, where is everybody, okay? Um, people aren't necessarily in the shop, but Demetrius is here in the kitchen. So we can say, hi, Demetrius. Local, he says, I'm Demetrius, local scientist and father. Thanks for introducing yourself. So that is done. And look, Robin's still in the bed. Robin likes to sleep in. And in fact, if we go to the map, we can see that her shop um, is supposed to open at 9 a.m. And so, you know, she should actually be out here. It's kind of funny. She's just taking her sweet time about it. Um, down here. Okay, you can go into the basement. This is Sebastian's room. But if you try to open it, it says you're not good enough friends with Sebastian to enter his bedroom. You can't go into people's bedrooms until you build up your trust and relationship level with them. Okay? Um, here comes Robin getting ready to go, and you could talk to her now. Um, have you met everyone in town yet? That sounds exhausting. But remember, we did meet Mar uh, Robin already uh, on the first day. But once she gets behind the counter here, or not, she's out. Oh, it's Tuesday. That's right. She might have, um, yes, most days. There are certain activities that people do, and I'll let you figure these out. Uh, but sometimes people have a scheduling conflict, whether it's like a club that they go to or an exercise thing or, you know, some kind of meeting or obligation. People aren't there every single day. So Robin's getting ready to leave. So she's not going to open the carpenter shop. Oh, but look what we got. We found a leak. So this is a foraging item right here. Um, and it gives us 40 energy and 18 health, which is terrific. Oh, look at this. A wild horseradish. Beautiful. So we're just picking up foraging. And look, here's another person. It's Linus, a stranger. Hello. So Linus is kind of like the resident um, hermit. He lives out here in this tent, right up here. This is Linus's little tent, um, and he's an interesting fellow. Now, if you want to go up here, it says railroad, and you can see that this path is blocked. So we can't get up there right now. Uh, there is an interesting little statue with a red gem right here uh, that we can do something with later. And you'll notice that this is blocked and this too is blocked and somebody is over here trying to clear this path for us so as time passes in the game some of these other passages will open to you okay so right now i'm just kind of walking around and showing what you have access to now these are little islands that are connected with bridges and this is a great place to come and fish okay so you could come here and fish or forage if you like now, I'll also show you sometimes um, on these screens, you can chop down the trees. Like right here, I can actually just chop down this tree. And I will, just to demonstrate that. And get all these things. Our inventory is rapidly filling up. But you'll also notice, okay, that on certain screens in the town proper, you cannot chop down trees. So now we are actually in Pelican Town, and I can't chop down this stump. So in town, you can't um, chop things down, but you can harvest. This is a daffodil, and we picked it up. Now, what is this? This is an awesome place. It's run down, and it's locked. But this is the community center. And as you progress in the game, um, you can work to restore this community center and earn all sorts of amazing benefits. And because of the community center, this is a reason why you want to store lots of different items at your place not only will people make requests for certain items like they'll be like hey i want a daffodil or something and you can give it to them get reputation social benefit with them and they might give you a cash reward also 
within the community center, there are little like milestone objectives where it will ask you for certain things. And so if you already have them saved up and on hand, it can uh, just help save you some time. Oh, here's Haley. So let's talk to her. Oh, you're that new farmer boy, aren't you? I am. All right, she's enjoying the fountain. Here's the playground. Okay, and so by the way, on the map, where are we? We're still a little bit north of um, Pelican Town at the community center. Um, and we're gonna come, I'm gonna pick up all these daffodils. And, you know, we haven't leveled up any of our skills. By the way, if you ever do level up a skill, okay, you can see them in this screen and it will reflect like how high your level is. That happens when you rest. So overnight, it will tell you you leveled up a skill. You don't see that progress as you do it or during the day. It happens overnight. And let's just stop into Harvey's clinic. So here's Harvey's clinic. Um, here's Maru. She wasn't at her house because she's here working behind the desk. You can buy an energy tonic or a muscle remedy. These things are great at like you know this restores a lot of energy and a lot of health it's very powerful but they're extremely expensive i never buy these things um it's kind of cool that they're here but you know as medicine is it's it's really expensive evelyn's going in for a checkup apparently um, but we've already talked to both harvey and evelyn now i could come in here and talk to maru uh, behind the desk and she says have you met my mother she's the town's carpenter we have met your mother maru uh, and we met your dad. We just haven't met your brother, Sebastian. So now that's another person that we've met. Okay, so this is the local clinic. Now, we already went into Pierre's, all right? But while we're here... Oh, here's Mayor Lewis. And this is what I was talking about. Check this out. It's hilarious. This is a great place to come on day two. All right, so I'm going to pause it. Come into the Pierre's place on day two. Pierre's shop, like has a few different things going on. It has this little uh, local gathering center where these ladies come for their exercise day. And then it also has like a church built onto it. So you might find people in here, um, you know, praying or doing uh, community activities. And this happens on Tuesdays. So like Marnie won't be at her ranch. Robin won't be running her shop. You know, Emily will be in here, things like that. But it's great to come here because you can get the introductions to all of these different people. So um, here's Jody. Oh, you aren't exactly how I imagined, but that's okay. I'm Jody. Okay. Here's Marnie. Ah, Mayor Lewis told me you just arrived. I'm Marnie. And here's Emily. Oh, I can read it on your face. You're going to love it here in Pelican Town. We are. If you're ever looking for something to do in the evening, stop by the saloon. That's where I work. And this is another good point, like I've said before. People have places they live, places they like to hang out, and places they work. And so you you kind of just, as you go, pick up like where the people are going to most likely be at a given time if you want to track them down. And here is Robin. My arms are strong, but my legs need work. And here's Caroline, who we haven't seen yet. Hello, you must be Dr. Incompetent Tutorial, the new farmer. I'm Caroline. So we just got to talk to a lot of people. Nobody's in the church. Um, this is the kind of kitchen for Pierre's. Nobody's up there. There's Pierre's bedroom. Um, and we'll just move down here. Here's Mayor Lewis. We've already talked to him. Now I'm going to show you something. We can buy parsnip seeds, but check out over here. Um, this is the backpack. So if you want to buy a backpack, which will give you 24 slots of inventory, you start with 12. So this effectively doubles your inventory you can buy it but it costs two thousand so it's a little expensive um but you'll start making this money in no time now i'm gonna go ahead and buy uh some new seats now um here's something that you need to pay attention to so i could buy parsnips beans cauliflowers potatoes whatever i want but what you always want to do is make sure, okay, that I think there's 28 days in every season. So as there's 28 days in a season, if I were to, for example, buy these cauliflower seeds, it says they take 12 days to produce a large cauliflower. And it says plant these in the spring. Well, if you have crops that are planted in one season, 
and then it changes to another season, if those crops cannot be in both seasons, they will just die. And you won't get the, the grown cauliflower uh, or whatever crop to even harvest. They just wither and die. So you have to make sure if you wanted to plant these cauliflower seeds that you gave them 12 days to fully grow and mature so you could harvest them before the next season. So you got to really watch that when you're planting. Um, okay, and let's see. I'm going to uh, pick up some more parsnip seeds and plant them. Okay, and um, oh, my inventory. That's right. Okay, so uh, let me go ahead then and sell. I'm going to sell um, this uh, wild horseradish, okay, just to make some space. I want actually a wild horseradish, to be perfectly honest with you, but I can't right now uh, carry it with everything else. So I'm going to just pick up and I'm going to buy a ton of parsnips. I'm going to buy as many as I can, actually. 25. All right. Now it's 2.40 p.m. All right, I've been dallying. I'm going to go beeline straight to the beach, okay? So there's the saloon. I'm just going to kind of curve over and move down. Here's Mayor Lewis's house. And we're going to go across the beach, and uh, the bridge, rather, and this leads to the beach. And you get to a cutscene, and here's Willie. Ahoy there, son. Heard there was a newcomer in town. Good to finally meet you. I'm still trying to unwind from a month on out in the salty seas. It was a big haul. I sold a lot of good fish. Finally saved enough to buy me a new rod. Here, I want you to have my old fishing rod. It's important to me that the art of fishing stays alive. And hey... Maybe you'll buy something from the shop once in a while. So he's going to try to give you a fishing rod here, uh, which is amazing. So you get a free fishing rod. Uh, you received a bamboo pole. Now, I'm going to have to drop some more stuff. I'm actually going to just drop this uh, sap uh, because I have plenty of sap. I can easily get this. Uh, I will put the sap in the trash and pick this up. And this is, again, why you want that backpack. All right, so now I have put this in my inventory and his gift menu which is on the top is empty my inventory is all set and you just click ok there's good water here in the valley all kinds of fish oh yeah my shop's back open now so come by if you need supplies I'll also buy anything you catch if it smells it sells <laughs> that's what my old pappy used to say anyway So a lot of people in Stardew have this kind of like um, capitalistic habit of he's like giving you a starter rod and he's saying, hey, the first fish is free, but if you want a fish, you're going to need bait and you have to buy that from me and you want new poles, you got to buy that from me. So they're really just kind of like trying to get you hooked on whatever endeavor they have. Uh, and that's, that's way too cynical. I'm just being silly, but he will buy all your fish. So fishing is a great way to eat and make money. Also... This is the beach, and the beach is terrific because there's cool foraging here. You can pick up all of these different shells and gather them, uh, and you can fish here, okay? This is Elliot's uh, shack, and we can't go in here. Here's a bridge. It's broken, and if you have 300 pieces of wood, you can fix this. That's a lot of wood for us right now, but later that'll be manageable. And there's places like this in the game where you will be able to kind of expand where you have access to by either completing quests or passing time or spending resources. Speaking of Elliot, there he is hanging out on the bridge, but we've already met him. Um, there's Mayor Lewis walking. Now this is the sewer. We cannot go in here right now. You'll see it's locked, um, but potentially you may find a key for that. And going here, um, this is Emily's house, uh, but there's other people that live here as well. I believe Haley lives here, uh, but nobody's home. All right, let's see. And there's Vincent. Uh, oh, here's all the kids, right. 
So this is Jas. She says dot 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 hi. And Penny was out. She kind of takes care of the kids during the day. I'm tutoring Vincent and Jas. They're a handful, but it's nice to make a difference in someone's life. All right, now you can just check introductions. Look at this. We've now gone up to 20 out of 28 people met. So we're doing a really good job of meeting people. All right. Um, and nobody is home here. Good. Okay. So I'm going to go back to the farm. And this is, uh, again, we already passed through this way. But if we look at the map, this is Marnie's ranch. Now, Leah lives right here in this little cottage. You might find her out here. She's an artist, so she might be, like, painting and stuff out here sometimes. Um, but we've already talked to her and Marnie. So we're doing a great job getting introduced to some people. We still haven't explored everything in the town. We haven't gone in the saloon. We haven't talked to Pam at her trailer. Um, we haven't talked to George, uh, who is... Uh, disabled he's in his home and we haven't gone to joja market for example so there's a lot of places to go and people to meet but we're doing a good job making progress now before it becomes nighttime i want to plant all of these parsnips that i purchased because it's going to rain tomorrow so we get a, like i said that free day and i want to just take advantage of that and have a ton of parsnips out because to be honest, planting that many parsnips is actually, um, and taking care and watering them is actually kind of uh, a slog, but it'll make us good money. All right. I'm just going to walk and you know, expand our farm. And just as a heads up, you can make your farm however you want. Um, you can, you know, put them one by one. They don't need to be adjacent or anything. I always just find it convenient to place them like this uh, so that I can just walk in, in a tight location and get all of them. The other reason you want to keep them close together is uh, later, as you get some more technology and money, you'll be able to um, get sprinklers, which, like, automatically water a set area of the ground uh, they start out i believe it's like a three by three so you want to have your crops close together to take advantage of the the watering of the sprinkler but what's cool is you know you can just rearrange things as you go as you get better technology as you get different crops different seasons um and so you really don't have to worry about anything you're not committed at all. You can, like I said, you can use the pickaxe and just take a plowed field and turn it back into dirt, let grass grow, completely rearrange the architecture of your property um, if you want. All right, I'm going to put the leek and the daffodil in here along with the fiber, the wood, and the stone. I'm going to... Um, actually, no, I'm going to keep the bamboo pole with me for now. Uh, but... Now, you know what? I'm not. I'm not going to be fishing right now. So I'm going to put the pole away just to get my inventory space. I usually carry my fishing pole with me, but not in the beginning of the game because I have no space. I also have no bait. Um, but if you want to, like, dive headfirst into fishing, you could certainly do that. Before I go to sleep, it's 8.20 p.m. I'm going to fill up my watering can so that it's ready for the next day. And then I'm going to just work on clearing out some of these trees. You take a look at your energy. Remember, don't forget, it's low. Our energy is like super low. And it just vibrated to tell me, oh my gosh, your energy is getting low. So we're not going to do anything else that takes energy. But remember, using the scythe doesn't take energy. So um, we can take advantage of that fact and just use some of the time before midnight to clear out some of our farm. Now, a lot of this stuff will grow back. The rocks and the sticks won't um, come back. Now, between seasons, things do happen, uh, but it still is in your best interest to just clear stuff out. You get resources that you can use, um, and you have more space. Now, you'll saw that uh, sometimes you'll see things like frogs and butterflies pop up. 
those are just animations to make the game charming, but they don't actually do anything. You can't catch that frog, for example, if you were curious. Okay, picking up some grass. It's 10 p.m. We're fine. Um, but I still don't want to do anything that requires energy. There's some worms there, but uh, using my hoe would take energy, so I'm not going to risk it. Just going to kind of um, look around and... I'm going to put away all the stuff that we picked up. Now, I did pick up a seed, so I'm going to show you this. I got this mixed seed. You don't know what this will turn into, but if you have some extra space, you know, go ahead, plant it. All right? Um, we're going to be fine with that there. I think I can afford to get one water on it. Yep. And the mixed seed could grow into something great. I still have a little bit of time, so before the time expires completely, I'm going to go over here and just dump in this sap and this fiber and these sticks to clear out my inventory, get started for the new day so we can have a fresh start and be ready to go for day three. Awesome. All right, so we got into bed before midnight. We talked to a bunch of new people. We planted a ton of parsnips preparing for the rain, and we are going to continue exploring the town and clearing our farm and working on expanding our ability to make money and enjoy Stardew Valley. Everyone, thank you so much for watching. I hope you're still finding this to be useful and informative. Take care.